For over 300 years, Isaac Newton's laws of motion have formed the foundation of physics, governing everything from motion of atoms to galaxies swirling through space. His iconic first law defines an object's inertia, its resistance to changes in motion. But, thanks to some clever historical detective work, a philosopher has realized we've been misinterpreting a subtle yet critical word in Newton's original Latin text for centuries. And this might change everything. Let's break down this discovery and why it matters. When Isaac Newton scratched his legendary laws onto parchment in 1687, they instantly revolutionized science. His universal principles described how objects move through the universe. Of course, we still reference Newton's iconic apple and notion of gravity today, but his three laws of motion remain physics 101. For example, simply put, his first law defines an object's inertia, its inbuilt resistance to changes in motion. The second law shows how force, mass and acceleration relate. And finally, the third law covers equal and opposite reactions. Deceptively simple, these principles form the foundation of classical mechanics. So, for over 300 years, we've seen Newton's laws as the bedrock of physics. Newton originally wrote his paper in Latin. When the first English translations emerged decades later in 1729, we suddenly had access to his ideas, including that famous first law of inertia. However, last year, philosopher Daniel Hoke uncovered what he calls a clumsy mistranslation of one key Latin word, quatimus. This adverb actually means insofar as or to the extent that. Yet, since 1729, it has been rendered in English as unless. So, on the count of that, generations of physicists and teachers have reiterated Newton's first law as saying objects will continue moving uniformly or stay at rest unless compelled to change by an external force. On the face of it, swapping unless for insofar doesn't seem like a big deal does it? But Hoke realized this subtle shift radically alters the meaning. The original phrasing suggests that whenever objects accelerate, slow down or turn, external forces are responsible for that change in motion. However, unless implies objects only alter trajectory if outside forces intervene. Let me explain this better with an example. Think about a skateboarder doing tricks in a skate park. According to our old understanding of Newton, the skateboarder would keep spinning unless someone came and pushed them in a different direction. But Newton's wording was a bit twisted over the years. What he actually said was that the skateboarder spins as long as there's some force making him spin. It's not just about someone interrupting the spin, it's about some force being there to keep the spin going. So. It's like saying, the skateboarder spins as long as there's some force spinning him around. Here's another one. Imagine you're playing catch with a friend using a bouncy ball. The old way we thought about Newton's first law was like saying, the ball will keep bouncing back and forth unless one of us throws it in a different direction. That's how we understood it for years. Now, with the new wording, it's like saying, the ball bounces as long as there's some force, like a throw, making it bounce. See the difference? In the old way, it seemed like the ball would just keep going forever unless someone messed with it. But the new way tells us that every bounce needs a little push. It doesn't just keep going on its own. So it's not just about stopping the ball from moving. It's about understanding that the bounces happen because of those throws back and forth. It's a small tweak in words, but it changes how we see the game of catch and why the ball behaves the way it does. This contradiction didn't emerge until 1999 when two eagle-eyed academics first questioned the accepted translation. 
yet their updated version gained little traction. More than 20 years on, Hoke aims to finally overturn centuries of repetition. He admits, revisiting Newton's wording may not transform physics, but he believes that correctly understanding the Founding Fathers' key principles truly matters. Some consider this just nitpicking, but Hoke says carefully re-examining Newton's ideas clarifies what he actually meant. In particular, the philosopher was confused as a student by what Newton intended in his first law. If it suggests that objects travel in a straight line without outside forces, that makes little sense because gravity, friction, and resistance are always influencing motion. By reintroducing insofar, Newton's phrasing tells us that whenever acceleration or direction changes, external forces cause that change. Hoke admits some thinkers find his reading of Newton's first law unconventional or barely worth arguing. Yet, the philosopher stresses textbooks should be updated for accuracy and context. George Smith, also a philosopher, says the whole point of the first law is to infer the existence of the force. Now that is an exact quote. Just kidding, not that force. This change in translation answers the question. Why did Newton create a law for bodies without external forces when our universe always has forces like gravity and friction acting on them? Ultimately, this linguistic revelation doesn't mean toppling Newton's laws or rewriting physics. And, in an era where trust in expertise is diminishing, it is crucial for science to continuously revisit, reinterpret, and refine ideas in pursuit of greater truth rather than ego. That's spooky. Looking back at science from a long time ago may seem pointless. However, small mistakes can slip in over many years as ideas get repeated. So, going back to what Newton, the father of physics, said, helps us understand what he meant about inertia. Fixing books to make them right is a smart thing to do, even if it doesn't change today's calculations much. This shows us that science keeps checking itself to find the best truth, not just quick answers. Facts don't change, but how we understand them can. Even after more than three centuries, we're still figuring out what Newton's ideas really mean. If you learned something new, drop a like and consider subscribing to the channel. And click right here if you want to learn about a life-changing concept that connects everything in the known universe. Until next time.